Hey everybody, it is Crypto Quantum Mental, and today we are going to review the Ishimoku Cloud. I'm going to walk through my favorite trading strategy in regards to the cloud, and then I'm going to teach you guys how to actually calculate it from the ground up. I provided a link in the description of this video that'll lead to a Google Sheet where you can get your hands dirty and calculate the cloud by hand. As always, it is very important to be able to calculate any indicator before you actually use it. My opinion is the only way to truly understand it. Now let's jump right in with the background of the Ishimoku. It was developed in 1969. It helps identify trends, potential inflection points, supports, and resistances. Uh, I like to utilize it with a volume indicator as well in terms of a confirmation signal. And many traders utilize it as a one-stop shop I just mentioned I like to confirm it with a volume indicator, but some people just simply use the cloud by itself. There's four key calculations when it comes to the cloud. Now there's two lines and two spans. That's two spans are what makes up the actual cloud and then the lines go with it. Let's talk about the lines. So the first line is the conversion line. It is the fastest of the four parts of the Ishimoku. It's plotted in real time and the way to calculate it is the nine period high plus the nine period low divided by two, or the average of the nine period high and the nine period low. The baseline is the second slowest part of the Ishimoku, also plotted in real time, and this is the 26 period high plus the 26 period low divided by two. Now going to the spans, we have span A and span B. These spans are what makes up the cloud. Span A is the second fastest part of the Ishimoku, and it is plotted 26 periods ahead. That's critical. Keep that in mind. It helps build the cloud, and if span A is greater than span B, the cloud is going to be green. Now, span A is simply the average of the conversion line and the baseline. Span B is the slowest part of the Ishimoku, the slowest of the four calculations here. It is also plotted 26 periods ahead. And if span B is greater than span A, the cloud is red. And span B is simply the average of the 52 period high and the 52 period low. As with most indicators, this stuff is fully customizable. You can use days, hours, uh, minutes, and you can change these periods to uh, whatever you'd like. Now let's walk through an example of a chart of the cloud. So let's imagine we have an asset with these closing prices. You see 226 periods on the horizontal axis. Imagine these to be days or hours or months, doesn't necessarily matter to be completely honest with you. This, however, we have to keep in mind that we need data before period one in order to calculate the cloud. We actually need 78 data points before period one in order to calculate the cloud for period one. I'll get to why that is in a second. But first, let's plot the conversion line. The conversion line is a nine period high plus a nine period low divided by two. So in this case, we actually need nine periods before period one in order to calculate the conversion line. As you can see, it moves pretty quick and it reacts pretty quick to price. The baseline is the 26 period high plus 26 period low divided by two. And this moves a lot slower than the conversion line. That is because the period length is further out as a longer look back period, which makes it slower to react. Now let's plot the cloud. You have span A and span B. If A is greater than B, you're gonna get a green cloud. Now the cloud, both parts of the cloud, span A and span B are plotted 26 periods ahead. So that's, let's go back to how I, I mentioned 78 periods. So look at span B. It is the average of the 52 period high and the 52 period low. Okay, and it's plotted 26 periods ahead. So first we have to go back 26 periods and that period 26 periods ago is where we actually calculate the 52 period high and 52 period low. However, we need 52 periods in the past to actually get that point. Therefore, we actually need 78 periods uh, of history in order to actually calculate the first uh, leading span B line uh, mark. So you need quite a bit of history. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, uh, shoot me a comment. Now, most of you are probably watching this uh, 
get some trading ideas or um, at least my favorite trading strategy in terms of Ishimoku. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, this is just for informational purposes, uh, not financial advice. All trading uh, has a ton of risks, so keep that in mind. So the first thing you need to do is determine the trend. It is the most important thing to do in terms of Ishimoku. And there's two ways to determine trend, the color of the cloud and where the price is relative to the cloud. I'm going to speak in bullish terms here. So a green cloud is bullish and a price closing above the cloud is bullish. In order to have a solid trend, both of these things have to be true at the same time. So you need a close above the green cloud, just the opposite for a bearish trend. Okay, so now we know the trend, but now we need some entries. So first and foremost, trade with the trend. Do not trade against it. That is my primary rule when it comes to Ishimoku. I do some value investing as well. However, here with Ishimoku, it is primarily momentum based. You want to look for crossovers. That is the key when it comes to finding entries with the Ishimoku. And there's really two crossovers you want to take a look at. Uh, one would be the price crossing above the conversion or the baseline. And the second would be the conversion line crossing above the baseline. Both of those crossovers also require, in my opinion, a close above the green cloud. As always, you can just reverse these for bearish entries. Now there's really two scenarios that can happen. One, you get a close above the green cloud, but no crossover. Then I would enter as soon as we get a crossover. The second scenario is you get a crossover first, for example, below the cloud or during the cloud. In that case, I would wait to enter until we actually get a close above the green cloud. Now, as I mentioned before, yeah, people use this as a one-stop shop. However, I like to complement it with a volume indicator. Okay, so now we have an entry. What about exiting via stop loss or take profit? The Shimoku also allows us to identify some supports and resistances. All four lines can, consider, can be considered one. Whatever line you choose kind of depends on your risk tolerance and your overall strategy. In terms of stop loss, as an example, choosing a closer line is going to result in more stop outs, but it's going to result in lower risk. So the line that's further away or a further away stop loss is going to have higher risk, but a lower chance of getting stopped out. So it's purely based upon your own strategy. Me personally, I like to choose a line that's about two lines away or the other side of the cloud. But to be completely honest with you, I prefer other methods to determine supports and resistances. I'm a big believer that supports and resistances are based upon behavioral finance. So what that means is something that is well known is much more likely to be respected. So something like a round number has a much higher likelihood of being respected than something that's a bit more exotic like the Ishimoku cloud or uh, specifically calibrated exponentially moving averages. Stuff that people simply uh, don't use as much won't be respected as much as something that is just very, very well known, such as a very basic round number, like $100. So what are some criticisms in regards to the Ishimoku? Uh, first, it's effectively four moving averages, but really weak moving averages because it utilizes the high and the low. Uh, these days, we have much more computing power, so it's a lot easier to actually calculate a true moving average, whether it's simple or exponential. The cloud isn't, the Ishimoku doesn't really give a good signal when the price is in the cloud, and it's pretty poor in ranging markets as well. And as I mentioned in a slide prior, I'm not a big fan of the support and resistances given by the cloud. Uh, frankly, I like uh, much more well-known supports and resistances you know, based upon of horizontal lines or moving averages or uh, round numbers. And lastly, calibration could be a major issue for 24-7 markets. Ishimoku was built for traditional markets. So how can we utilize it in a 24-7 markets? Many people, many traders utilize these numbers, 10 periods for the conversion line, 30 for the baseline, 60 for the leading B. Some actually double that for conservatism. Uh, you know, they're nice round numbers, but in my opinion, they're not entirely accurate. If you wanted to uh, match the 
you know, stock numbers to actual calendar time to make them equal in terms of calendar time, you would need 11 periods in conversion, 36 for baseline, and 72 for leading B. That would be for daily to match the calendar time. However, you know, there's no problem if you just want to keep the trading days the same. Uh, so in that case, you know, standard stock uh, calibration would work just fine for you. And lastly, let's jump into actually calculating the Ishimoku. I have a free tool here. Here's the link. The link will also be in the description. I'm gonna jump right into it in a second. I'm gonna walk through how to calculate it from A to Z. Uh, I just wanna mention one other thing. For those that are uh, you know, Ishimoku pros, you'd recognize there is a fifth calculation for the Ishimoku, which is a lagging line. I don't like it. I don't think it added much value, so I didn't even uh, talk about it, but I don't want to get called out. So yeah, I just don't think it adds much value. Now let's jump into the free tool. So here you guys go. Uh, if you've watched my other technical analysis videos, you would recognize the spreadsheet where I walk through exactly how to calculate the indicator. A column A here is just periods, it could be hours, days, months, weeks, whatever, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, column B is the closing price for that particular period. Now let's actually walk through the Ishimoku. Column C is the conversion line. I'm doing the stock here, so nine periods. It's the average of the high and the low over the last nine periods. See here, I have, I'm finding the max of the nine periods, which is the nine period high. I'm trying to find the min of those nine periods, which is the nine period low. I'm just simply calculating the average. And then here is the baseline, same exact thing, except I'm doing it over 26 periods. As you can clearly see, the conversion line is a lot faster than the baseline. The leading span A is the average of the conversion and the baseline plotted 26 periods ahead. So it's actually uh, a bit faster then the baseline is lower than the conversion line, but it's got to keep in mind it's plotted 26 periods ahead. And the leading span B is the average of the 52 week high and low. So going back to span A, you can see here, I have the average of the conversion the baseline 26 periods ago. And why am I finding it here? That's uh, simply because this is the first period where I have leading span B. You need an awful lot of data for leading span B. Uh, here you got the same formula here where you have 52 weeks high and low for the first 52 periods plotted 26 periods in the past. So you have to find the 26 period ago and plot it 26 periods. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little tongue tied here, but you can see it quite clearly via the formula. So the point here is you actually need 78 data points before you can actually calculate leading span B. That's quite a bit of data. And uh, and what are the drawbacks of the Ishimoku is you need quite a bit of data in order to calculate leading span B and hence the cloud. And lastly here, over here, you can see the chart I have graphed out. You can see the cloud, you can see the price, the various lines. Uh, feel free to play with the numbers. It'll give you a good idea on how it's actually calculated. Again, it's very critical to understand you know, which lines, which spans are faster. It gives you an idea how the Ishimoku actually works. So jumping back over here. Uh, if you liked this video, definitely subscribe to my channel, Crypto Quantumental. Follow me on Twitter at CryptoQF. Like, comment. You know, whatever you'd like to support, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, safe trading and always, uh, you know, be careful and understand your indicators and understand how to calculate them.